In this video, I am going to explain about the client DHCP operation in Cisco SD Access. You know that once the fabric is configured, you can start onboarding clients into the network. The connected clients like the C1, as you can see here, will start sending DHCP requests to obtain an IP address. The DHCP flow in fabric, in SDA fabric, is different compared to traditional networks. So let's go to the process step by step. Here, before talking about the Cisco SDA process, here we have the traditional network. In traditional network, the DHCP client will send DHCP discovery message, this is broadcast message, and receive DHCP offer message. Again, this is broadcast because until now the DHCP client doesn't have IP address. And then DHCP request and finally DHCP acknowledge. After the DHCP acknowledge message, the DHCP client will uh, actually has IP address. But in Cisco SD access, the process is different. Let me to explain about it here. As you can see, we have the endpoint c1 the fabric edge node s1 this is a switch and the border node you know that we with border node we can reach to the actually outside of our sta fabric like shared services also here it's possible that we have a fusion device like a fusion router and this is the dhcp server a shared services also let me to inform you that between the fabric edge node and endpoint we have a layer 2 network but between the fabric edge and border node, we have layer three networks, as you know, okay? Also, the switch port connecting to the client is configured in a VLAN, okay? And the fabric edge means the S1 has an anycast gateway for the client IP pool. It means that, you know, that I explained about the anycast gateway and also I will explain more than this about it. But for now, let me to inform you that, for example, if we have H1, okay, and also H2 and also H3 device, we can define the same IP address as the anycast gateway on all of them. This is one of the benefits of the actually Cisco SDA fabric. For example, here in each of them, we have the SVI interface, SVI for switch, uh, switch virtual interface, for example, for VLAN 10. And this SVI interface's IP address is same on all edge nodes. What does it mean? It means that when our client roam to uh, or move to the uh, from one edge to other edge and again uh, to other edge, it doesn't need to change its gateway IP address. Why? Because the SVI IP address is same on all devices. And this is the Anycast gateway. Okay? Don't worry about Anycast gateway now. Actually, I'm going to explain about this process. Here you can see that we have 10 steps. Step 1, step 2, step 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to explain about this process. It is very easy to understand. First, step 1. The client C1 sends a DHCP discover packet to the S1 node. And you know that the C1 doesn't know anything about the Cisco SD access. Actually, it thinks that I'm uh, trying to obtain IP address from DHCP server in traditional network. Okay, because of that, it will send the DHCP discover and the DHCP discover is a broadcast message. Okay, step two. DHCP relay, the fabric edge configured uh, previously with the DHCP relay uh, or a DHCP helper option to forward the DHCP message to the DHCP server. Okay, uh, actually, the fabric edge is, adds its routing locator or RLOOK IP address in option 82. I know that you heard about the option 82, maybe in your studies about the IP DHCP snooping or other features. You know that we have some options in DHCP message. For example, option 3, option 6, one for the default gateway address, one for DNS domain 
a DNS uh, actually IP address or some other things. We have one important option, option 82. The name of this option is information option. And you can add some information related to the actually switch related to the port of the uh, connected client in this uh, information option. It means that the fabric edge node should convert the DHCP discover to DHCP relay message because you know that this is the DHCP server that should send IP address to the uh, actually uh, the client. And because of that, we need to relay from the fabric edge node the DHCP message to the DHCP server, DHCP relay message, okay? And inside of this DHCP relay message, the fabric edge should populate the option 82 with its RLOOK or RLOOK IP address, actually RLOOK IP, okay? And other also information because of that here in fabric edge, we have RLOOK IP address. And I explained about the RLOOK IP, IP address. This is like, this can be the interface loopback that we have in the fabric edge node. Actually, S1 adds its routing locator or RLOOK IP address in option 82, information option, to the DHCP discover and then DHCP relay on S1 converts the broadcast DHCP discovery to unicast and forward it out to the for, uh, fabric border and finally to the DHCP server. Actually, this is the unicast DHCP relay message. All right, this is a step two and now DHCP relay received by the DHCP server. After that, DHCP offer, step three. The DHCP server located outside of the fabric, okay, replies with the DHCP offer destined to any cast gateway IP address. And you know that here uh, we send this packet with the any cast uh, gateway IP address, okay, and because of that, the DHCP server will answer to the any cast gateway address. And you know that the option 82 information encoded by S1 by fabric edge node is copied back unaltered into the DHCP offer by the DHCP server. Actually, the information we sent before now is available in the DHCP offer message. Here we have one important notation. You know that when we have actually the DHCP offer message will send will be sent to the Anycast gateway IP address. But you know that the Anycast gateway IP address is available on many edge nodes, as I mentioned before. How the border node can understand that forward this uh, actually DHCP offer to which fabric edge node, okay? You know that in option 82, we have the RLOOK IP address. RLOOK IP address means the border node now can understand to which fabric edge node this packet should be sent, okay? And because of that, actually, we can say the DHCP offer arrives back to the border node. And you know that the border node is configured with a loopback, which is the same IP address as the Anycast gateway. And the border will inspect the packet for option 82 and based on the RLOOK information encoded there, the forward, will forward the DHCP request back to S1. Look at here, forward request to S1. This is the usage of option 82. And after that, here, uh, as you can see, note that this is necessary since the Anycast gateway address which the DHCP server sent the offer back to it is not unique within the fabric. It is shared by all fabric edge nodes. This is the function of option 82. And now the forward request message include uh, the DHCP offer re uh, received by the fabric edge node, step four. Step five, the fabric edge node will send DHCP binding message to the C1. Actually, once S1 gets the DHCP offer from the border, 
it updates its DHCP binding database and forward the DHCP offer packet to C1 here. We have a DHCP binding, include the information from C1 and include the offer from the DHCP server. It means that on my, for example, port one, uh, we, uh, we have a client with the MAC address, MAC one, and also we received an offer from DHCP server with this IP address. Here we have a binding table. And after that, C1 now received DHCP binding message. C1 will now send a DHCP request packet, as you can see here. Again, in step seven, the request is forwarded to the border, which in turn forwards this to the HCP server. Step eight, the DHCP server replies to the border with the DHCP uh, actually acknowledgement. And again, the border will inspect the packet for option 82 to find the R look to forward the act to the appropriate fabric HS1. And finally, C1 has now an IP address. Actually, we can say our problem, our issue was that the same IP address configured on all fabric edge nodes. This is the any cascade fee address. How we can, how border node can understand the received answers from the DHCP server should forward to which fabric edge node with the information available in the option 82 of the actually re received message from the fabric edge node. This is the secret of the client DHCP operation in SD Access. All right, now let me to review DHCP process in Cisco SD Access here again with more information. You know that I explained before that the Cisco ICE or maybe a third party radio server instructs the fabric edge to place the switch interface connected to the endpoint onto its authorized VLAN and maybe tag each packet from the endpoint with a specific scalable group tag or SGT. Okay, I'm not going to explain about them here now again, but you can see that we have a fabric edge node and also border and maybe control plane node. And here we have shared services include DHCP server. And here we have the endpoint. Okay, I want to explain what is happening. And here you can see the configuration that we have in the fabric edge node. Okay, after the endpoint is connected to the VLAN, unless configured with the static IP address, it broadcasts a dynamic host configuration protocol or DHCP packet in order to receive an IP address from a DHCP server. And you know that in a traditional networking en environment, the IP helper address command in IPv4 is configured on the upstream layer three or switch virtual interface SVI, which encapsulates all DHCP requests and unicast them to a DHCP server elsewhere in the network with itself as the a source. Okay, here you can see under the interface VLAN 200, uh, uh, 1021, we have these two common IP helper address. 100.127.0.1 and IP helper address 100.64.0.100. It means that we have two DHCP server, one in this IP address and other in this IP address. Okay. Actually, in Cisco SD access and any cast gateway is used, uh, which replicates the same SVI address on all fabric edge nodes. I explained it. As a result, the DHCP request must be especially handled in the fabric, okay? This process is facilitated by the fabric edge acting as a DHCP relay agent using the DHCP option 82 field, which allow the fabric to locate the source of the DHCP request when the DHCP server replies. Now you can understand it easily, okay? Also, here you can see be, uh, because we need to have uh, the I, re relay option or actually information option, we need to use these commands. IP DHCP relay information option. 
and because this is the comments from DHCP snooping, first you need to enable IP DHCP snooping and then IP DHCP snooping, for example, for these VLANs. And after that, you can enable this comment. What does it mean? Now we can easily understand why we need to enable DHCP snooping because you need to have a relay option or information option actually. Why I need to, uh, to have information option? Because we use any cascade for IP address and because of that, the border node should know, should, should can find the, which fabric edge node should receive their uh, answers of the DHC. Because of that, we need to forward the uh, information. We need to add the information uh, like the RLOOK IP address of the fabric edge node inside the option 82. Okay. And here you can see option 82 added with, uh, for example, this IP address. And in, this is the RLOOK IP address, as you can see an instance id sourced from the uh, for example svi this is the any cast gateway ip address it is very easy i can i think that you can understand it easily now actually this example uh, shows a sample of the dhcp configuration that is pushed to fabric edge switch from cisco dna center you know that you don't need to configure them everything is, will push from cisco dna center okay to the fabric edge node this configuration includes the IP helper address command and enables the DHCP relay agent and DHCP snooping to intercept DHCP request from the endpoint. And about the process, the DHCP request process in Cisco SD access include step one, the client sends a broadcast DHCP request with its MAC address as the source to the fabric edge switch. And the fabric edge switch adds option 82 containing the VX LAN network identifier or VNID or instance ID along with its RLOOK address and then encapsulate its, the request into a unicast actually packet with the IP address of the SVI or Anycast gateway as its source and DHCP server IP address as the destination. And the packet is routed in the overlay and sent via the fabric border to the DHCP server outside of the uh, actually net SDA fabric. And you know that this packet they will receive finally to the with the DHCP server. And this figure shows the flow of the DHCP request sent from the endpoint and the fabric edge suite inter uh, intercepts this request and adds option 82 to the request uh, containing instance ID, for example, 4099 and its RLOOK address of this IP address. And the fabric edge switch also changed the source of the DHCP request to its SVI address of 100.100.01 and sends the packet uh, toward the fabric border in the overlay. All right, in this actually figure, you can see the sample output of debug captured on the fabric edge switch during the DHCP request process. It shows uh, the fabric edge intercepting the request and adding option 82 before forwarding it toward the DHCP server. Look at here, receive new DHCP packet from input interface, this interface, and then process new DHCP packets, input interface, and some other information, and then add the relay information option, encoding option 82, VLAN mode port format, and after that, the it's a unique we forwarded this packet to the actually dhcp server and also the response here you can see the response from dhcp server the response from the dhcp server is sent back toward the endpoint and goes through first dhcp reply um, is received by the fabric border which has a loopback interface configured with the same IP address as the Anycast gateway. Actually, it will receive this packet. And the fabric border sees option 82 in the reply containing the fabric border's RLOOK address and the instance ID and sends the DHCP response directly to the fabric edge. I explained it before, you can understand it easily. And the fabric edge receives the reply, de-encapsulate the packet, and then forward the raw DHCP reply to the actually endpoint. Actually, this figure shows the flow of the DHCP reply sent from the DHCP server 
and the fabric border receives the reply and after a reading option 82 in the packet directs the reply to the fabric edge switch for forwarding to the endpoint.